it's hot and the AC stopped working. That's what it is. <laughs> the door for the rats. They're like, thank you. Made it easy for me. RV urgent care to the rescue. You're going to teach me how to fix my own AC, huh? <laughs> Do not call RV urgent care. That'll make you fix your own RV. It's going to be a little fun job here. Trying to figure out what to do with it. Some people say to not travel with a full fresh water tank. Yes or no? It, you know, Tom, that goes back to the myth of uh, propane on when you're traveling. Oh, yeah, there's a good one. Yeah. Um, to my opinion, on the old campers, before it all started selling and buying. What is like the brand with the least amount of problems? Your advice on picking out an RV? I will tell oh, you, viewers, boy. one thing to do though. Okay. When you have motor trouble. These are RV tech secrets you should know. Who builds the best RV? How do you find the right RV for you? How to get a Schwinn Tech slide unstuck? Should you drive with a full tank of water? And should you drive with the propane on? That's all according to an RV tech. I'm Tom with enjoythejourney.life and we've got more RV repairs to talk about today. Our number one fix is the rear AC stopped working. And even here in Florida, it gets really hot during the winter, so that's not gonna fly. Plus the washer and dryer is shaking a lot more and kind of getting loose from the connection to the wall. So we're gonna see if they can troubleshoot a solution on that and a couple of other things. So whenever I have to call a mobile RV tech, I ask them if it's okay to ask them different questions and to record it both for myself and for you guys because you can learn so much. And that's what I love about Billy and Chris from RV Urgent Care is they're super helpful, they work at a reasonable cost, and they do a great job. And this repair visit was no exception, and they don't need more work, so they like to share as much information as they can so that you can take care of an issue on your own. It's quite a bit of information, so what I will do is go ahead and put links to the chapters or timestamps down below. Stick around till the end of the video because we have a solution to end high RV repair costs. Plus, would you like to meet Sheree and I coming up this year? We have several opportunities that I'm gonna talk about at the end of this video. If you're brand new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring that little bell. RV urgent care to the rescue. How y'all doing? Billy, it's great to see you. How y'all doing today? <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> RV issues, <laughs> as usual. Good to see you. How y'all doing? How are you? Great. How's it going? Oh, I can't complain. <laughs> well, hey I'm glad you guys could squeeze How us in. Good. We're doing good. How are you doing? Good to see you. Welcome back. <laughs> okay. So you got a back air condition won't work? Yeah, that's the big thing. And we have a few other small what things. What year is the camper? Uh, 2019. So the roof should be fine. I'm going to get up there and look at it. Yeah. I want, to, I want to get on and just look. So how busy have you been lately? Oh, <laughs> six and a half days a week. Oh gosh. A lot of nights you get home about nine o'clock. Wow. And you live a little ways away from here too, right? About an hour and 15 minutes. Okay. But I work here. I work in the Troy, Alabama area. Okay. I remember talking to you over a year ago and you were busy then. How much more busy are you? Who? I would say probably, I won't say double, but I'll say the same and half as much again. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, th thank you again. I won't hold you up here, but I'll, I'll, I'll pick your ear every once in a while. Uh, right, <laughs> so. we'll, tell you, we'll tell you what we know. That's okay. about the best we can do. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I was, you still got awesome, awesome reviews on Google. That's, that's great. Well, I, I try to, let me tell you a little bit. I'm a camper. And you know, I got into this originally just to help people out. Right. And then I said, well, it's a pretty good living right now. So we started working on it full time. And, um, but I help a lot of people out. Somebody called me and they said, well, my air conditioning ain't working. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tell them about three things check because I got plenty to do without having to help everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's, that's great. Because I think I saw one of your reviews actually had a customer saying that, that you just told them over the phone what to do, got their air conditioning going. And people say, um, can I have your address? I say, no ma'am, you can't. 
because they want to send money and I, I'm not going to do it because, you know, I'm glad to help people. Right. No, that's great. We need more of that in this industry for we sure. We need more of that in this world. And, yes, absolutely. And, and right, I forgot that you were a camper as well. Uh, could you use some new camp chairs? Well, sure. Uh, Lippert actually gave us some chairs to give away. So. Tell everybody not to feel bad because my camper tears up too. I got to put air conditioning on here. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. And I bet your your camper gets... Uh, oh, my wife the, said, when are you going to check ours? <laughs> right. The, the least amount of attention. Yep. Kind of like the CPA is the last person to do their taxes. <laughs> The contractor's house is still half <laughs> over up. Right. Well, well, cool. Thanks for coming out, guys. And Coleman. Arizona. Yes. I've been trying to keep up with y'all, but... Chris, you don't have to laugh. Oh, I can't even keep up with us. What? Whenever you work 70 hours a week. Uh, no, <laughs> you don't have time. Yeah. yeah. So it's not power enough for anything. I'm at... Well, you know, the thermostat is... is you know, lights up, looks like everything's gonna happen, but... Uh, you gotta take the cover off, Chris? Yeah, I gotta go get a... You're looking at the control box. Real. Yeah. You know, I put it on cool high, looks like it's gonna work, and nothing happens. Tells you we got 12 volts up there like we're supposed to. Okay. Now we're somewhere we're losing 120. Yeah, I don't... We, yeah, we don't want you lighting up like a Christmas tree. Must be all that boondocking on these rough roads. <laughs> Shook something loose. Have you been through Louisiana? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, the roads are so <laughs> terrible. Oh. Yeah, it'll be just a silver connector just dangling. Yeah, this this yeah, one right fun. here. Okay. Tom is fishing to fix his first camp ring. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to teach you. <laughs> You're going to teach me how to fix my own AC, huh? <laughs> Then you can just you can you can work seventy hours. Uh, okay, <laughs> well, that's kind of loose up there. Yeah. That whole that whole box is kind of. Yeah, they're they're made cheesy. I hate to say it. I'll get up there and see if I can't tighten that box yeah. up for you too. It's just got two. There's wing some wing nuts. nuts. You just tighten and tightens that box up. You might. You mean RVs aren't made with the best quality parts? <laughs> <laughs> sure they are. Okay, I got it. But yeah, though. I don't. Yeah. Wow. Like I said, it's just two wing nuts <laughs> holding that whole box on. I was going to say, do not call RV Urgent Care. That'll make you fix your own RV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Everybody got trees in the way here. Yeah. All right, Chris, go in there and turn it. The air conditioner on and turn it as cold as it'll go. This is like the fun part of the job, getting to climb on the roof, huh? You got that right. <laughs> and you got a tree to fight here. That's all right. <laughs> We're used to it. So an AC unit's really pretty simple, right? There's only a few things that can go bad, right? right? You got a control board. Main thing is to check, and if you get, if it's not cool and you're getting power to compressor, most of the time it's going to be a bad unit. You have to replace the whole unit. Okay. If you're not getting power to compressor, a lot of times it's a control board. Or either a uh, capacitor gone bad. Okay. Darn, I can't cross my fingers and hope that it's like another disconnected wire. Capacitor ain't come on yet. I mean, uh, compressor ain't come on. Yeah, I I didn't uh, hear it come on either, so that's... That's, that's a good sign. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's probably either going to be a board or a capacitor. Okay. That's a little bit cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Is it dead or alive? No power up here, so that means it's probably going to be a control board. Okay. So that's not even up here then? That's no, gonna be... we're going to go back down. We, we, we can take this off and pull it, but we can also take the bottom off and pull it a lot easier down there. Right. Could that be related or they're just like a like a cluster problem? Well, or, you it know, may be. It's... You remember how we found that one wire off? The other wire may not be connected good neither. Right. Or by one wire coming off, could it have shorted something else or? Uh, not really. Do you deal with a lot of bad air conditioning units? You know, it runs in cycles. We do. Uh, it's got where the medics has really went downhill this, oh, okay this is a coleman here which in my opinion coleman's one of the best ac's 
Now that's just my opinion. But now we change out probably 10 to 1 on the Medic compared to Coleman. Okay, interesting. Well, I would think, you know, being in Florida, man, I mean, this is, everybody's got their ACs going. <laughs> They're going in the wintertime. <laughs> so. You got that right. At 12.7, you immediately knew it was bad? Bad. I know the control board is telling it to come on. Now we're fishing to see if the relay is opening up and send it to the top. Oh, okay. Got bad control board. Check out one more time. 120. Nothing across control. Okay. Got bad control board. It's less expensive than... Uh... <laughs> most, most definitely. <laughs> A, a lot less expensive. Is that uh, like special order or is it? Uh, I'll have to order one, but it, it don't take long. She doesn't like it as cold as, as I do, yeah, so. so I lock him in there and he can play with his own AC. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's 30 degrees, I'm happy. <laughs> Other than needing washing, the seals is all looks good. There's no cracks in none of them. Okay. So we got the sniffer out again to check for leaks. Good over here. Okay. Good, Tom. Nope. All right, good deal. That's what it is. It's a door for the rats. They're like, thank you. Made it easy for me. Yeah, I think that's the scary part is uh, <laughs> knowing what kinds of things might crawl in. When the sun hits it just right, you can see a big old hole. Hi, Brian Luke. Let me tell you, I'll come to him working on a camper, sitting right over there, right across from y'all. Okay. I get in there, and they turn the water, and water just pours. Hmm. So we got a line bust something. So man, I had to go exploring. I went in the bottom. It wasn't it. You could you could see the water pouring out, but you couldn't see it. So I had to come in there and take a cabinet apart to head in there. Rats had eaten that plastic line. I mean, it was just pouring and pouring out. Oh my gosh! So, and all I could do, you couldn't get in there to run new lines where it was at. So all I could do was plug that line off. Luckily, it was just the hot water going to one of their sinks. So we just plugged it, put a cutoff valve on where they cut it off so they could get it back to a factory. What is it with mice and rats that are drawn to Arby's? My entire life I've you. never had a mouse or a rat, and all of a sudden we've had two in this one. Something about the wiring, the plastic coating on the wiring in here, rats love. The Pex pipe, rats love. I don't know what it is. What's the solution? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> don't be camping in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, I think it, what it is, when that thing goes out and comes back in, it's staying hung like that. See how it's hung? Right. Just take, come out here and hit it like that. Okay. And, and pull that flap out. The flaps are see, somehow. See, this flap should be out. Yeah, I'm... This whole flap should have come out just like this. Oh, I see. Oh, mine, uh, mine's got some little plastic things that sit on the wall right here. See, that should Whenever come out like that. Whenever it comes out, it pulls that flap out with it. And that would stop that from doing it. Is there some kind of treatment I thought I heard of for yep. these? See if, I, see if you see a can somewhere in the truck. Or can I put it under? Another solution I probably don't have. Rubber seal conditioner. Rubber conditioner. Okay, yes. I pretty much can guarantee I don't have that. So. And you want to keep it on all these seals. Okay. It's like a silicone base. And it just it, it keeps these seals so you don't have to replace them, as, you know. Okay. Yeah, Shuri is always hyping on me to you didn't wave do the jeep wave <laughs> you have to do the jeep wave people be talking bad about you <laughs> yeah. i've tightened them up and they um, come back loose and I, and yeah they keep coming out and i'm like you it know it's like an insert that flares out whenever it goes through yeah would that be tough enough you think to hold this thing or how bad does it shake um yeah, it does shake when you do load sometimes, but I think, I don't know if that's from, you know, a lopsided load or 
what exactly you know, people are joking with me when they originally put this in that this was just going to come <laughs> falling down and it hasn't in two years uh but i think <laughs> i gotta do something different I mean, like, it's gonna be a fun job here trying to figure out what to do with it okay but they make some rivets that they're using a lot on putting your uh on and things on okay that when they go in they're big on back and they spread wide and we might could put some of them in there that spreads wide and it would hold okay it don't back out like a screw would it we had a guy had a mercedes motor home and they had put screws in his holding it to the camper and it was working out brand new he drove from louisiana to niceville well that's what i don't understand because I mean, an RV is like uh, taking your house uh, through a constant earthquake as you're going down the, you know, the road. And why st everything that's not supposed to ever loosen up isn't made in a permanent way to just never loosen up. If you don't have to ever service it, you know, take it off or whatever, it should not, you they, know. They should have started putting all the all the awnings on with rivets. Even like a deck, you know, at your home, I meant the, the screws, they... Work, work, work them way out like freeze thaw or something yeah. like that yeah we're gonna see if we can use the rivets oh okay if not we're going in with these okay so that should hold a lot better <laughs> the old screws right there yeah those are pretty small look how they has uh well one of them is real warped but there if you, you can't tell it but if you try to screw it in it's kind of warped okay because they were so small but we've had to put some bigger ones in it Good deal. Chris, I think there's another battery in that bag. It's fully charged. That you can put in the drill. There's nothing on this side. Right, try to slide yours out easy. You slide out it easy. So there is no stud right there. Gosh, I can't believe that. All right, I'm, I'm on hook. I'm surprised it held that long. You know, it's been a couple years. I mean, unless it just wore that stud out. And I, these studs in this in a camper is not. <laughs> They're not like studs in a house. No, <laughs> you don't really? have no two by fours or anything. Okay. Maybe we can see the holes better too. All right, I should get a drill. See here. There ain't no stud in there. I done checked it out. It feels like there. I feel it feels like he missed the stud. I think the stud's right there. Look at this. So you can't go that way. Yeah, he missed. It missed. So wow. Stud's right there. All right, but anyway, what we're gonna do? We're gonna go with the rivets, right? Got it angled that way. Pretty sure that's a stud because if you go this way, I meant you can go as far as you want, but this way it stops. Oh, okay. Huh. See that? <laughs> that stops right there. Hit a stud? I'm pretty sure. You in the vent? Yep. So it's only over by what, like half an inch or something? Uh, yeah. You want to never notice it. Okay. Good deal. How much you can see how it pushed that over just a little bit. Just slightly, okay. Now we can truly say it's not going anywhere? It's not going anywhere. <laughs> I don't know if, if it's funny or not, but the thing with RVs is you find these screws. Yeah, where they come like, from, you look around, oh, right. and it's like, oh, don't worry about it. They had to just drop out of air. Oh, right. It's like, where do they come from? So you have this pile of screws. So that can't be good in the long run. Oh, you know, the mechanics always said if you had extra screws left, you did the job right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Pull them tight. yeah. Oh wow, yeah. Yeah, look at that. That's so much more sturdy there. Uh -oh. That's not... I would probably check them bolts uh occasionally. That's a zero gauge. But these are but you just go in that short distance. 
I think you're fine, Tom. Okay. That's zero gauge. Yeah, I think they were talking more of, yeah, what's on the batteries themselves. The batteries ain't going to matter because they're such short run. Okay. What's on them batteries is fine because it's such a short run. Now, if it was a long run, they wouldn't, they would get hot. And if they're not hot, you're okay. Okay. You, they'll get hot, believe you me, if they're too small. Oh, yeah, I mean, they get hot when we're running like they get AC. hot, hot, hot? Um, pretty hot. Like I mean, burn you like. It, can um, you lay your back of your hand to it and hold it there? I, I can. I could hold it. It wasn't like. I think it was pretty hot, but the not wire hot. ain't gonna melt. Okay. Not that hot, right? What do you say? No. No, I think you're fine. Okay. What's your advice on picking out an RV? Take get the floor plan you like because they're all basically made the same. So they're all going to have issues, so you might as well have the, what you want. <laughs> I see. Have what you like the looks of. Cool. Well, that's that's a interesting way of uh, looking at it. What's that going to be? Twenty five, fifty bucks for something like that? Mm, I think or? that board's about a hundred and thirty. Oh, I'll okay. look and see, but I'll. Okay. <sighs> RVs. <laughs> <laughs> Always cost them money. You know, it's what you like. Right. Well, we go you know we'll have a month or you know have a big expense but then we could go months and months and not have any expenses right. so it just right when we look at it for the year i think it's it's two to three thousand dollars a year i think in typical like maintenance fix, and stuff, fixing right. things thing so and if you do have a house you're gonna have the same troubles right the refrigerator is gonna go out <laughs> the wash machine's gonna go out you're gonna have the same troubles all right so billy some people say to not travel with a full fresh water tank yes or no <laughs> it's a lot of weight you're talking seven pounds a gallon no, i would probably right. say not a full tank okay because that's a lot of weight on a holding tank i mean on any of your tanks especially bouncing we you know we was talking about the roads a while ago right bumpy roads makes that seven pound turn into 10 more pounds you know then we had somebody talk about how if the tank's not full the water sloshing back and forth if you get it at you're trying to stop at an intersection it could push you through have you ever heard of anything like that before well wait she does shift but i would still say not a full tank of water you take 100 gallons of water that's 700 pounds yeah, so when we're full, we've got over 150 gallons of freshwater capacity. So and we, we so you're talking about almost a thousand pounds. You're talking about over a thousand pounds. We, we travel full. <laughs> so. Most people do. <laughs> you know, Tom, that goes back to the myth of uh, propane on when you're traveling. Oh, yeah, there's a good one. Yeah. Um, some people do, some people don't. Them, the ta your uh, lines has got a pressure cutoff thing. And what I mean by that, if you have a wreck and that line gets cut and that gas starts rushing out, there's a thing in there that will cut it down to a very little bit of gas coming through there. Okay. When it, when it goes so quick, it lets it know something's wrong and it shuts the gas flow almost down. Okay. Almost off. That's in the tank or that's in the RV? That's in the lines. Oh, okay. So that's just standard in RVs. That's standard in RVs. So it's, it's, not, it's not only standard... It's a safety thing they have to put on the RVs. So that's a myth of shutting the propane off. I would think so. Okay. That's what most RV techs say. I mean, I, I have asked others and, and, they, and they say that. So I, but it is a, you, you see it, uh, this like. A that's burn. a big question brought up by a lot of people. Well, you get these pictures posted online of like burned out camper. And it was like, oh, you know, they were driving with the propane on and, you know, a spark or something like that. And so, you know, for a while, a lot of the, a lot of the campers you seen burnt was right at the refrigerators. Right. And they was having trouble with some of the refrigerators getting too hot and catching on fire. It wasn't necessarily the propane or anything like that. That's probably the major question asked was about the propane. Oh, totally. I called Tiffin, no matter what it is. In five, ten minutes, they can tell me exactly what to do. Really? Well, that was one of the things that we heard that uh, Van Lee, or Van Lee, I should say, yeah. uh, which I think this is 
basically the same as Tiffin, it that is. they have 24-7 yeah, uh, customer uh, yeah, tech support, So, which is unheard of, you know? <laughs> but uh, with Tiffin, so, all you do is call in a few minutes, their tech guy's on there, and he'll tell you exactly what to do if you're having trouble. Wow, that's that's really cool. What is like the brand with the least amount of problems? Tiffin. Really? Allegro. Allegro was probably one of the Tiffin's main brands. Right. The Allegro. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That those are really nice. If you're looking at a Class A. Mm, grand. You know, Grand Design got bought out by Winnebago. Right. To my opinion, on the old campers, before it all started selling and buying. The uh, coach, the coachman was the best they made. Okay, but when they started buying and selling, it's hard to keep up with all the combining. And I think maybe somebody mentioned New Horizons or something. They only make forty RVs a year. Now uh, you know uh, Alli Alliance. Alliance, yeah. yeah, it's one of the newer brands. We, we worked on one of, a couple of theirs, but it was hot, like a hot water heater or something like that. Nothing major. Uh, they real easy to work with. Okay, yeah. You we call them, they had parts there. I'm talking about they shipped them. Straight to us. No okay. questions asked. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, we're, we're starting to get more issues with this, probably putting more miles on it. And uh, speaking of like a, a, a RV water issue, did, did you see our RV flooded video? <laughs> I didn't that one. I missed that one. Yeah, we had a lot of water in the underbelly and they found several different problems. Some kind of issue around the hot water heater. I did see that. I did see had, that. Had busted. Yep, I did see that. And uh, then like a pressure release valve or something mm -hmm. behind the shower uh, was leaking a little bit too. I was like, that's where you was up there close to your hometown and got it Yeah. Uh -huh, I seen it. Yeah. Um, like, I like Lippard. I can call Lippard in a few minutes. They'll walk me through whatever I need to and tell me what to check and they can pretty much tell me if what it is. I don't like their Swin Tech system. Okay. But a lot of stuff's going to Swin Tech. Their, their, their techs are good about helping you. But there's just a lot of trouble to work on. Is that uh, the bedroom, what the bedroom slide is? Or is that what that is? Nope. That, them, I love them slides. Okay. The old standard slide the was just... Okay. It was like the icing on the cake. The new ones is the bedroom, the ones that's the... Uh, it's got one right there. Oh. It's got the little gears on, like you got over here okay, on Okay, so the, the bedroom one, that's, that's the Schwintech? That's the Schwintech. Okay. This is your swim tank with the gears on the top and bottom. Okay. And what you got, you got a you got a computer board in there. Okay. You got a motor on this end and a motor on that end. On top of them motors, they got a gear. Okay. And that thing, they stay in time. It every time that time and it's just like timing on the car. When that thing comes by, it hits a thing, it sends a signal to this box, they stay in the same. Okay. So if one of the motors goes bad, they start getting out of sign and it just shuts them down. So then you're stuck. <laughs> well, you got to get there and take the motor out. Uh, actually, yeah, downsizing makes sense. Actually did a video about their slide like that, the Schwintech getting stuck out. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't see it, but uh, but they had that. <laughs> you know what's worse than it stuck out? What's it's that? stuck in. Uh, yeah. Because then you can't get that you little screw tape motor You can't get to the screw up top to get it out to pop that motor up. I will tell you, oh, viewers, boy. one thing to do, though. Okay. When you have motor trouble, let's see if when you have one stuck out and you're trying to get home, the little box right here. Okay. Right in this little thing, there is a button. Okay. Mash that button seven, six times on the seventh time, hold it in till the lights start flashing like a Christmas tree. Really? And then it puts it in like a manual mode. You can run them in and out then. Oh, wow. So it's still same button, but it'll go There's up. a little old bitty button in there. You just mash it seven times in there, right in this little hole. You'll see a little old bitty <coughs> button. Take an ink pen or something and mash it. And on the seventh time, hold it in until the lights start flashing back and forth. Okay. And it puts it in manual mode. And then from there, you're still using the same button? Inside, up. yep. It puts it in a manual mode, though, so it'll start trying to come in with you. Okay. Wow, that's good to know. But if it gets stuck in, yeah. You have to get lucky on the inside, and you've got to... 
<laughs> almost demolish that motor to get it to pop up off that. Oh. Gear. To break the motor. Oh boy. That's that's no fun. But anyway, the motor sit on one motor sits on each side. Okay. And it's got a rod that comes down from the ceiling, and that motor sits on top, and it's got a gear on this end, and a gear up there. Okay. And it, it, that's what runs that slide in and out on them, gear, them little gears turn on that rod. I, it, both in, in this RV and in the Columbus, basically the same kind of deal. The bedroom slide always had this. The Swintex kind of was, I think, originally designed to go on small slides. Okay. They've started putting them on the big slides now, and you're starting to have trouble with them. Oh, boy. It was made for a small slide rooms. Well, speaking of lipper, you guys want some chairs? I do. All right. Some <laughs> yeah, let's check it out here. Um, well, I hope you guys enjoy these. Thanks for the chairs, Tom. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you, Tom. Well, yeah, thanks to Lippert, actually. Yes, thank so. you, Lippert. <laughs> Lippert, I do a lot of y'all's work. Thank y'all. <laughs> we'll delete out all the stuff that was negative about Lippert. Huh? Just it was kidding. just Swintech. They actually want to hear negative feedback. Well, let me tell you now, like I say, <laughs> to me, as far as any kind of stuff that works on them, they got the best tech support you can get. When you call them, they tell you, walk you through it, and they'll stay on the phone with you till they till you get it fixed. I would yeah. rather I'd rather work on a lipper. And you're not on hold for though. two days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. And and uh yeah, I, I love how they embrace feedback and so even if they think they've got a, an issue, a known issue, they work on fixing it. So And like I said, the only thing that I don't like to work on Swintech. And let me tell you, just, I will get to customers. I can't get to a customer because I'm so busy. Uh, I got Swintech's number in my phone. I sent it to Lippert. them. Lippert, I mean. They'll call me back and say, Lippert worked good with me. Thank you for helping me. Yeah. Yeah, they've got that number. Uh, their customer experience number, I think, is what it's called. And they, they got a phone it. out, but I've, I don't use it. I just call a tech. They probably get tired of hearing from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they don't try to get you off the phone really quick either. It's like, well, is there anything else I can help you with? like yeah. no <laughs> like i think we got this yeah. one but thanks guys yeah appreciate it uh you know rv urgent care here in the florida panhandle and your troy alabama as south well. Al south alabama in the florida panhandle okay like like you need more work right <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what we, we got some jobs off off y'all's last video oh and good they deal. even say it we seen y'all on uh enjoy the journey dot live <laughs> okay they said that's Sweet. why we called you yeah, yep. that video actually got a lot of views. It was over a hundred thousand views, I think, on that the, video. Uh, well, we'll put uh, your contact information down in the description, so we'll like back you guys up like six months or something with work. That sound okay? <laughs> my wife said, "My wife said, hey, can you start taking off least on Sundays?" <laughs> <laughs> But we do appreciate all the work. Oh, uh, good, good deal. We meet yeah. a lot of good people. That's the thing about it. They're I the bet. friendliest people is people at camps. Yes, absolutely. So. And when they're having a problem, they're just as friendly as can be. I've checked three Coleman's here lately, and all three of them have been bad. Okay. And that's just unusual with Coleman's. I heard there was a, maybe a bad year, a bad line, or something like that, and I think we lucked out and didn't get any of that. But most, like I say, Coleman. Well, most of the time, there's more Dometics than there is any other AC. Right. Comment. That's just the nature of the beast. And if you got more out there. Chris, good to see you again. Good yeah, I appreciate you. it. Thanks again. Bye, guys. <laughs> So even after a loose cord was put back and replacing the whole board itself, the AC still didn't work. I had to order a thermostat and actually with Billy's help, I put it in myself because we had already moved to the next campsite. Take your new one and you're gonna just put them, you, this little precision screwdriver. No, these are just flip levers. No, maybe. But you just take and unscrew that, pull okay. that one out, put it in the other one, screw it back in. Just keep them in the line like they are. Okay. And that's all there are to it, and then you put it back on the wall. This part finally came in. Yes. This piece right here that we figure is what's causing the AC in the back here not to work. It's hot, 80 degrees. 
back here trying to blow with the fan we got the AC running in the main but it just it doesn't keep up back here when it's this hot so I've got this little piece it looks like a good match and uh, go ahead and turn the power off and get this put in and cross our fingers we will have AC in the back got the third AC shut off here but I also want to kill the power to the uh, 12 volt system as well so the actual uh, thermostat is off as well it's not really labeled so I'm doing the guessing game here of the fuses so <laughs> see if I can find it got it and I'll show you what I mean by not being labeled well. It was this one right here. It says Max Fan. <laughs> that was the one that shut it off. So now I'm good to go to swap that out. We'll leave this little guy out. Took me a little bit to figure it out, but you have to push these little pins in and then the cable will go in and the pin will stay pushed in, not allowing the uh, wire to get pulled out. Almost got it. Just snapped a picture of the old one so I could match it exactly. That makes it a little easier. Looks good. Now for the test. Yes, it's working. <laughs> It which went from 83 to 80. <laughs> and I got up there and it is blowing cold air. So yay. <laughs> so what is the solution to high RV repair costs? Well, we recently got a wholesale warranty for our used RV. Yes, you can get them on used RVs, so we will not be paying full price for any more repairs. And actually, a few weeks after we got that warranty, our microwave died. And that video will be coming out shortly as well, talking about the repairs and how much we saved. But already I can see how an extended warranty will save us so much money because all RVs, as you heard from Billy, and as you may have experienced yourself, all RVs need repairs. That's just how it goes. And if you would like a fast, free quote, you can use our link to wholesale warranties down below in the description. Even if you are a DIY person, which I am not, and you can handle a lot of the small things, that's great, but the major RV systems that could break in your RV, you're likely not gonna wanna tackle those yourself. And one major repair could completely cover the cost and save you money. And having that extended warranty is great peace of mind that you know you're not going to get stuck with a really expensive repair bill. So again, you can get a fast free quote just by following our link down below in the description. Hey, Sheree and I are so excited. We've got a meetup coming up actually really soon in the Orlando area. Now we've limited it to 250 people, but it's a combined meetup with several other channels. Let me name some of them here real quick. Brazen Brits are gonna be there. Brian and Michelle from Livin' Our Vision. You've got five to go. Switch It Up, Liz Amazing, Gander Flight, the RV Entrepreneur Podcast, Nothing, Nothing Adventure, Nothing Gained, Traveling Down the Bannisters, Fearless RV Living, Chasing Our Dreams, Down the Road We Go, and Our Epic RV Adventure, and maybe a few others will be showing up as well. Again, we've capped it at 250 people. I know it's gonna fill up really quickly, but we will see if we can add more tickets because if you're in the area, we would love to see you. So if the link below to the Orlando, Florida meetup is full, check it again in a few days. We'll see if we can add more spots to it. If it doesn't open up and you wanna join us again, we have another opportunity that we will put a survey down below. That's right. 
follow the survey link because we want to know what kind of a trip would you like to take with Sheree and I this year? And actually, would you be up to maybe getting out of the RV and maybe flying somewhere, maybe even out of the country, a tropical destination possibly? Well, we want to know if you take that short survey, it'll help to give us an idea of how many of you would like to join us and what kind of trip should we all go together on. And if I know Cherie, it's gonna be a tropical destination, but there are hundreds of choices available. So fill out that short survey so we know if you wanna join us. And it's gonna be actually a smaller group. I think just a few dozen people can go on one of these at a time. But we are so excited to try something other than RVing and to meet up with you guys. And again, if you're brand new to our channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you hear about all of our videos when they're released. And wherever you are, remember to enjoy your journey. We will see you next time.